all right welcome to module two in this module we'll be talking about components of cctv system these components include cctv camera dvr stroke mvr power supply monitor cable and the connectors we'll be taking them one by one and each one we take will break down into definition types functions and parts so this uh, this is one of the most important modules of this uh, tutorial this is where we'll be breaking down in details all the parts that make up a cctv system so as we proceed I want you to pay close attention to what we are doing in this module. Every other thing outside this module is an addition, apart from configuration, which is uh, module 7 or so. Module 7, sorry, module 6. Module 6, module 4 every other module is an addition so make sure you grab whatever you can so that you can get started immediately okay cctv camera that's the first uh, component in the cctv system in fact this system derives its name from the cameras uh, they are not like normal video uh, cameras they are closed circuit television cameras television in the sense that we have long distance transmission but in a closed circuit uh, when enabled to the internet your cctv can travel beyond borders so that's what uh, makes it a closed system television they would have called it a closed system recording a video recorder but you can see in engineering names are derived from either what they do what the, the equipment do or the shape of the equipment or the name of it, the inventor so what is CCTV camera? As you can see on the screen, CCTV camera is the main of the visual equipment. It captures the video and image images in real time and sends them to the recording equipment. In this case, the recording equipment is the DVR or NVR as the case may be. Some equally use cloud, that's the internet to record now uh we want to talk about that real time that means uh what your cctv gives you is what is happening at the moment the cctv shows you a video coverage a picture or voice of what is going on in your property or wherever it is installed at that moment though we have playback features where we can play back what happened before but as you play back the dates are displayed the time is displayed the time of the event and all whatnot so after recording this is sent to the after picking this or capturing this uh, video and images is sent to the recording equipment we will talk about the recording equipment subsequently. <clears throat> CCTV cameras comes in different sizes and shapes. We will talk about that later. Now let's look at the classification of CCTV cameras. How do we classify or identify CCTV cameras? If I see this one, how do I know that this is what it is? How do I know that this is what I need for this installation or for that installation? So, uh, 
cameras are classified based on certain parameters like i said before in engineering items or materials or equipment derive their name from their shape from the de technology they deploy from the name of the inventor from the function they perform there are other ways but this is basically what we do in engineering number one cameras are classified based on technology uh, when we talk about the technology that's where we talk about uh, is this camera a solar camera is it a wired camera is it uh, is it a spy camera the technology it deploys is it a Wi-Fi camera though when you look at these parameters they seems to be overlapping but there are just minute differences so the technology 3g 4g all those things analog digital that's what makes it what it is so we'll look at them uh, bit by bit can be classified based on shape is it a fish eye camera is it a bullet camera is it uh, an indoor camera is it an outdoor camera is it is a, a a button type camera a pen type camera so the shape determines uh, the classification then we can classify cameras based on the lens size is it a 3.6 3.0 2.6 uh 6.0 is it 8 millimeter and so on and so forth we use the lens size to quality classify them they can be classified based on connectivity method of connectivity like i said before wireless cameras don't need wire or cable to connect to the viewing device or uh, ptz cameras are solar cameras standalone uh, some sorry solar cameras are standalone ptz cameras that use solar uh, energy as the means of connecting power to the cameras then use sim card or wi-fi to link to the viewing device wireless cameras wired cameras wi-fi cameras and so on and so forth now generally we have dome camera we have bullet camera we have c mount camera we have ptz camera we have the stroke night cameras a camera can be a bullet camera <coughs> as well as a day and night camera then we have infrared stroke night camera a camera can be a ptz camera and still operate with infrared and night camera then we have network or ip camera that works based on ip address we have wireless cameras <clears throat> then we have a high, high definition or advanced high definition cameras so i didn't group them according to the classes uh it's good you know them it's very very wonderful you know that something like this exists so that from which angle a client may tell you i need a ptz camera or a client may tell you i need 360 degrees camera i need a i need a night vision camera so understand the dynamics of the market uh, people may name cameras based on what they think so be sure you 
you familiarize yourself with all these names as you go on you, as we proceed we will demystify them now let's look at the types of cameras there are basically two types of cameras the analog cameras and the digital cameras all those cameras we name fall into these two groups the analog cameras that's the technology we use before now the digital cameras that's what we use currently uh, i don't know this may change anytime soon but the major difference is that the analog cameras consume more energy and they are bulkier than the digital cameras the digital cameras are very small and compact and they consume less energy so let's look at the parts of a camera a camera has the lens which is in front of the screen that picks the the video signal it has an infrared led scattered around in front of the camera it has a casing or the body it has a cable through which it, con it connects to the circuits that does the work in the camera it has a power connector a bnc connector power connector for connecting the 12 volts power supply to it then bnc connector for video connection then the mounting bracket that we screw to the wall or wherever we're using the camera now <clears throat> these are typical examples of the cameras we are talking about this is a bullet camera sorry this is a bullet camera and i'm pointing at the body this is the lens this is the lens for this one this is a connector but this one is rj45 connector so this is a bullet camera this is a dome this is a ptz camera <coughs> A standalone PTZ, no, this is not a standalone, this is a PTZ camera, wired PTZ camera. This is bus camera. This is IP camera, dome IP camera. This is a, this is also an IP camera. Right, this is. A bullet camera you can see the cable right these are equally other ones this is a C mount camera the C mount this is where the C is uh, this is a clock camera a bulb type camera uh, this is a spy camera this is also a spy camera these are other types of camera this is a goggle camera this is where the lens is is a lens of the camera this is a pen type camera this is the lens of the pen camera this one is connected to a socket it's a spy camera this is a fish eye camera 
this is a button camera there are a whole lot of them a whole lot of cameras this there is a type of camera here this particular camera sorry this particular camera is referred to as turret camera uh, this one is bullet camera these are the two types of camera you will be seeing uh, now this one the one that has this is an ip camera the one that has two cables 112 volts and bnc is actually a digital camera this is a digital camera the other one is an analog camera the one that has two cables i will show us video of these different cables later now let's look at the video recorder video recorder it works like your uh dvd the only difference now is that the dvd doesn't record but this guy records and plays back the recorded videos so the dvr dvr simply means digital video recorder it is an electronic device used for capturing and saving videos pictures and voice notes produced by the different cctv cameras so it acts as the cpu of the surveillance system the central processing unit all the information that the camera receives is processed and decrypted at the dvr so the types of dvr are the digital the digital video recorder and the MVR, MVR. The types of video recorder, sorry, is DVR and MVR. DVR means digital video recorder, while MVR means uh, network video recorder. So <coughs> you can see it. Now, the DVR does the same work as the MVR. The difference is in the method of connection. DVR uses uh, internet protocol. Sorry, MVR uses internet protocol to connect all the individual ca cameras. It has an, a point of entry for each camera. Why DVR has BNC connector for each camera? I will show us all these things. Let's just lay a foundation before we start going into uh, picking them one after the other and demonstrating. So they come in different sizes and these sizes represent the number of cameras that can be connected to each one. So these sizes include 4 channel, 8 channel, 16 channel, 24 channel and 32 channel. So 4 channel DVR we contain four cameras. Eight channel will contain eight cameras. Sixteen channel will contain sixteen cameras. The same twenty-four channel for twenty-four cameras. That two channel for that two cameras. Now this is a typical layout of a <coughs> DVR, the back view of a DVR. This point is what we refer to as the video input then this single one sorry this single one is the video output this is a USB port This is a power supply point. This is point of connection to the internet. Then we have VGA.
VGA output, HDMI output, then audio input and outputs. This is the power switch. That's how a typical uh, DVR appears. The back of a DVR, that's how it looks like. Now you can see it clearer. This is a four channel DVR. This is an eight channel DVR. How do we know a four channel and an eight channel? This one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight input points. Then one output for BNC. Sorry. This is the BNC output. This is the AV output. This is HDMI output. This is VGA output. Then these ones are USB ports. USB. Then RJ45 for internet. This is how the front of a DVR looks like. This is the back of the DVR. This is a 16 channel DVR, the same thing. The only difference is that this one has 16, 16 points. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. This is audio. This is uh, RJ45. These two are uh, USB for mouse and the uh, external recorder. This is uh, HDMI. Power button, VGA button. So this is a 16 channel DVR. Now, this is an NVR. Now, look at the major difference between a DVR and NVR. These points. These are the points where the cameras go into the NVR. Instead of having a BNC connector output, it has an RJ45 or a LAN port. We call them POE, point of entry. Point of entry switch. <clears throat> so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight of them. This one is LAN port for internet. This one is USB port for your mouse. Then we have the output. Output. Right. This one is a HDMI output. This is VGA output. Then the power supply. Power supply. The fan. This one is the fan. This is the fan for cooling. <coughs> so you can see the difference between an MVR and a DVR. These are different MVRs, 16 channel MVR. Now let's talk about the monitor. We'll see, come back to all these things and pick them one by one. 
I will show us a video I demonstrated in the video the different uh, front and back panel of the DVR. I use DVR as an example as I don't have uh, MVR with me now at the point of uh, recording the video. I also showed us a, a PTZ camera, uh, torrent camera, and bullet camera. So let's discuss monitor. Monitor is, uh, what is monitor? It provides graphics user interface to help us view the recordings and settings on the DVR. Without the monitor, you cannot see what the cameras have recorded. You cannot configure the camera. Everything will be in the DVR or MVR, but you cannot assess them. So the camera provides you with uh, an interface. It gives you an interface between you and the machine. Our monitor could be a television screen or a computer desktop screen. Even your phone can be a monitor or laptop. So that's what monitor is. You can see these two typical examples. These are two different laptop screens or uh, desktop screens. This is one, this is another one. So the number of cameras that we appear on the screen and the size of the display is dependent on the size of the screen. 14 inches, 24 inches, 32 inches, 64, and so on and so forth. The bigger the screen, the more the bigger the display, the smaller the screen, the smaller the display. Let's talk about power supply. These cameras need electricity. Now, let's focus on uh, digital cameras, or let's focus on, on, is it digital, analog, sorry cameras that use uh, external power supply not the one that will connect a LAN port to it so the BNC is separate the power is separate but in digital cameras the power the BNC the power the videos and other parameters are all encapsulated into the LAN port the point of entry so once you crimp your cable the way it should they do their own mathematics and pick which signals to send but for cameras that needs power you don't just go to the pole or outside where it is and attach a socket and plug it there no because it's a security system, you need to provide a central power supply for all the cameras in one location. So the power supply provides the needed electrical energy to the individual cameras. So all the cameras will come into the strong room where the DVR is so that we will be sure that nobody will tamper with the power. It converts 220 to 240 volts from the source of electricity supply that's based on what we have in Nigeria to 12 volts needed by the cameras. It also provides protection for the cameras against excess current and voltage. So it, it's fitted with fuses and the other electronic security to protect against surge. Once there is surge, or short circuit the fuses to the individual cameras are blown thereby protecting the cameras so power supply comes in different sizes 
we have a four channel power supply which can contain only four cameras we have nine channel which will contain only nine cameras <coughs> we have 18 channel for only 18 cameras and 24 channel for 24 cameras now if your camera is more than this number you you get to let's assume i have uh, 48 cameras it means i'm getting two of uh, 24 channel if i have 30 cameras i'll get one 24 channel and one uh, nine channel power supply that's that's about power supply so this is power supply now this green point is where you connect the camera as you can see that it has two holes uh two two holes one of the hole for positive the one on top positive the one that follows negative this one has screw positive negative the one that follows it will be negative positive negative negative that follows positive negative positive negative like that then this guy this is the main power pack that's what does the conversion from 220 to to 12 volts you can see these cables coming into it you can see these cables this going here so this is where your power comes in from then it goes right from here to this point right your cable enters through this point it has a point to screw to the wall there are four of them it has a key for this one the camera can pass through the back you can see it these are the fuses these are the fuses for this one this is power switch power switch the red one so this is a typical power supply so if you have four cameras you use this this one is for how many cameras one two three four five six seven eight nine so this is nine channel dvr yeah, sorry this one here is nine channel power supply why this one is four channel power supply uh, after connecting your cameras you lock up the screen you lock up the the power supply unit to avoid intruders from taking advantage of the vulnerability of your system okay the next thing we'll be talking about is a connector this is just a theoretical overview who we'll practicalize every other thing i i have a separate video for practicals you will see me demonstrating all what i'm saying okay so just follow this video step by step later you will have every other thing the video demonstrations are attached to this video so connector we have different types of connector connectors provides an interface between the camera and the video recorder it provides a means of connection between the camera 
and video recorder or power supply so there are different types of connectors that gives us the interface between the camera and the video recorder or the power supply now the types of connector are bnc connector male and female then video balloon male and female video balloon for female sorry then power connector male and female so video balloon is a type of bnc connector but i decided to separate it here uh, video balloon is used for long distances it is equipped with a, a little signal amplifier to boost the signal strength in case your camera is a wire camera located in a very far location for instance your dvr is in in the room while the camera is at the gate it can uh, give you video reception of uh, up to 100 meters So the BNC connector, BNC means bayonet not coupling, is commonly used. It's a commonly used plug and socket for audio, video, and the networking application that provides a tight connection. So mark that word tight connection. Uh, your video uh, it shouldn't be such that once. Uh, the system is shaking your cleaner can be cleaning your table if the connection is not too tight one camera will pull out you can imagine that situation that the camera pull out when you are yet to come to work and something very terrible happen you can't uh, play back or retrieve the video so uh, bnc gives you that assurance that the connection will not be lose easily except it is handled by someone who knows it using a mount somewhat similar to a way a bayonet knife a bayonet knife is used in the prehistoric era for in warfare mounted onto the end of a rifle so the bayonet knife you put it you twist right or left depending on how it is designed so BNCs are used to connect a variety of different quasi cable types. After the plug is inserted, it is turned, causing pins in the socket to be pinched into a locking groove on the plug. So that groove where the 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 pin is locked to the socket is was very important to us in BNC. Then we have TNC connector. TNC stands for threaded knot coupling. It's another type of connector. Instead of the, the groove and the pin, you have uh, a thread that gives you a more secure connection. So it's, it's a threaded version of BNC that uses screw thread instead of a locking pin and slot another thing is a video balloon so video balloon like i said is a type of bnc connector that is fitted with signal app amplifier to help increase the signal strength in long distance transmission it is used where the cameras are some distance away from the dvr i have explained this earlier now these are different examples uh, uh this is metallic bnc this is a uh, plastic bnc the head is metal while the the connection point has no plastic this is also another bnc type used together with the uh, av wire so this male this is female right this is an adapter mm. female 
this is our balloon our video balloon so now the the positive terminal will connect to this point the negative will connect to this the cable sorry the positive sorry the positive connects to this one why the negative connects to this one right then you screw it I will also show us a video of how to do that for our balloon you can see this point and this point As we are, we connect. You can see them, the two points. The red one is positive, while the other one is negative. See them, positive and negative terminals. Okay. Then we have our power connector power connector is another type of connector in the components of CCTV so power connector provides a point of contact between the power supply and the cameras it has a negative and positive terminal to which the conductors from the power supply is connected so the conductors that carries the electrical currents to supply the camera so that it can initialize are connected to this power supply which are then connected to the camera you can see a typical example so this is my positive terminal negative terminal positive negative So, this one is female, this one is male, these are other types, you can see them, these are also a power connector, okay, they are very simple to use, very straightforward, what you do is that the power cable, the red and black cable comes into this and you screw it then the other end connects to the power supply that's basically what we do with this then we have cable uh, there are what is cable so this is the conductor that conveys the signal to the needed destination what signal the videos the pictures and other signals it is this cable that transports it. In the absence of cable, we have the internet. We will also talk about the internet shortly after this. So we have different types of cable. We have the power cable used to power the power supply, to power the monitor and every other thing that needs to be powered we have the coaxial cable which is the rg59 cctv cameras uses rg59 while television uses rg11 there are other cables other coaxial cables but basically we use rg59 for cctv installation then we have hdmi cable it connects between the DVR and the monitor or the display, whatever you call it. VGA cable does the same thing. HDMI means high definition media interface. 
Why VGA means video graphic array. It's also a cable that uh, interfaces the DVR with the monitor. Then we have CAT5 and CAT6 cable. At present, we use CAT6 cable. CAT6 in internet cable. So it is used for digital video camera connection. Uh, for those cameras that use this point of entry, you use CAT6 cable throughout. In fact, I love working with CAT6 cable. Number one, the cables are very, very small. It can fit into your pipe very easily. Uh, they are not bulky. They are easy to terminate. So I prefer using a CAT6 cable to any other type of uh, CCTV cable. So power cable connects the camera to the power supply. I said that before. Coaxia cable, that's our RG59, connects the camera to the DVR. HDMI cable connects the DVR to the monitor. VGA cable connects the DVR to the monitor. CAT5 and CAT6 cable connects the camera to the NVR and power supply. So, uh, this is an example of RG59 cable. Uh, this is a four-way power cable. One input, four output. So this one will serve for this one we connect four cameras. So this is uh, RG59. Our RG59 cable our four-way power cable so router stroke modem stroke internet or switch router connects the dvr stroke mvr to the cloud to the internet it provides internet connection for the system to help us view our recordings and live videos remotely if your client is in america and he asks you how will i be seeing all these things you just tell him we will install router and through the router you will be seeing everything that's going on in your house so that's what a uh, router does the dvr stroke mvr is connected to the internet through an RJ45 port provided at the back and by means of a CAT5 or CAT6 cable. I work with CAT5 once. I regretted that experience. Uh, I work with one guy that uh, the guy recommended me for the job and he sells computer accessories. So he insisted on supplying some materials. I told him the cable I need. He brought another one and uh, I needed money then. If it was now, I wouldn't have agreed because later I had to go back and correct the error. So use the right material. Uh, Cassis cable is what we use now, no longer Cat5. The system can also be connected wirelessly through Wi-Fi. So, if you have a Wi-Fi modem or Wi-Fi source of internet, you can connect your DVR to. You can view your computers through Wi-Fi. I worked for somebody, uh, and the camera is a point of entry camera. All you do is just connect it to the router. Once the owner logs into the the system, clicks on it, it opens up because he's sharing the router. The facilities connected to the router will be visible to him. Is an example of modem stroke router. Four channel, four channel modem stroke router. This is the old modem 
we were using the pass. This one dealt with us seriously. So if you don't know how to use it, then after installation, you'll be running around. Because once you put off the system and, and it comes on again, the modem will not connect until you come there and connect it. So, though it is no longer in use now, this one is, uh, is from MTN. This particular one is from MTN. Mm. So, this is where we'll cap it up for <coughs> components of CCTV. Uh, we still have over vid other videos on practical examples of these uh, components of CCTV. Uh, we will talk about them later. Thank you.